Hello, and welcome to 3D Vision Technologies 10.4 Tech Talk, a monthly introduction to engineering technology that can make your company better, faster, and smarter. I'm Todd Majewski, your host for today. Today's topic is reduce repetitive tasks with SolidWorks Start Parts and DriveWorks Express. Our guest speaker is Jeff Sweeney, engineering data specialist and certified SolidWorks expert for 3D Vision. Jeff works out of our Columbus office and has been with 3D Vision for over 10 years. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thanks. Good to be here. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> hey, before we get started, Jeff, I want to remind everyone that this show is being recorded and we will send an email with a link to go back to the presentation in its entirety. Also, we'll be answering questions at the end of this 30-minute presentation, so use that chat window on the right-hand side to type in your questions. And also, if you have a question, you don't have to wait till the end to type in your question. So, Jeff, this is the question I think everybody in the audience is, is uh, um, having. Why should somebody uh, be listening to this presentation, and who is it really geared towards? Yeah, good question. I, I think really this is, this is going to be, my goal is that this is going to be for a lot of users, uh, whether seasoned users or brand new users. Uh, many times when I'm, I'm looking at that, see how new users work and build things, they kind of get into habits and they work the same way over and over again. And, and so why I wrote this presentation was really the goal is to let everybody say, hey, there's, there's opportunities for uh, improvement and to be more efficient in their design process. So there's always a better way to do things, right? I hope so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's always my goal. Huh? And that's uh, something that automation guys are always looking for. We're lazy. We're always looking for better, easier, faster ways to do something. But just so the audience knows, nobody has to buy anything <laughs> to make it faster, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. The, uh, we're going to show all out-of-the-box stuff today. Um, we're going to show there's some potential for more, but that's going to be right there at the end. At the very beginning, that we're going to show what you can do with uh, what, you, what you're, everybody already owns. Okay, great. But well, let's get started. So yeah, we're going to talk about two different things today. We're going to talk about start parts. I want to talk about who they're for, and we already covered that. Hopefully they're for everybody. Uh, some people are going to be more than others, but I think everybody has an opportunity to use these, these uh, start parts. So we're going to show what they are. Uh, hopefully you're going to see some efficiency gains when you, if you start to use them. And then I'm actually going to show you how to create your own. So it's not just a quick show. There's going to be a little bit of teaching involved as well. And then, certainly after that, we're going to take it to the next level. So, okay, now we've, we're using start parts, but how can I use those start parts to, be, to do even more, to be even more efficient and, and faster with your system? So, what I want to do is I want everybody to look at this particular part. Let's look at it for a second, and then close your eyes and think, how would you uh, start this particular part? How, how would you go through ourselves here? So, I'm going to go ahead and do how, how I'm guessing most of you do. You either are in uh, the novice mode, where you just simply pick a particular part, blank part, or advanced, or you could have even more. So I'm going to start with a blank part, then I'll come over to the side, and I'll, I'll choose my, my sketch. Let's go ahead and use our S key, because we're going to save some time with the S key. We're going to just draw that particular shape. Let's put some dimensions on there. I said that uh, this was going to be three inches here. Put the value in, and we want to have a dimension from here to here, which we said was going to be four. So let's go ahead and extrude it out to a, a quarter inch. And we'll click OK. So there we go. We're OK, done. 20, 30 seconds. 20, 30 seconds. Right. So that wasn't too bad. Um, but certainly the whole point of this is, is that I want to show you that you can do it do a little bit faster way. So to do that, first under, as far as your setup goes, go in, into your SolidWorks options. And under file locations, here is the location where we can have a bunch of start parts that are ready to go. So I've already created that. In my vault here, I have a, a start parts directory. And I have some, just some simple uh, PRT DOT files. And I'll show you how to make those in a minute. But, so I want to actually choose those locations. I want to delete this guy and delete this guy. And we'll add that brand new start parts location that I've done. So that's all I've done. Now when I try to make a brand new part, same story as before, new file new. But you see I have more choices available to me now. So here's some standard plates that I oftentimes start with. Maybe you oftentimes do some rounds. Maybe you're doing some step shaft. So this is a little step shaft with a key on here, or a regular step shaft part. So if I want to do something quickly, I can go ahead and say, all right, let's put the, uh, with the corner origin or the center origin, click OK, start the clock. Now all we need to do is add some dimensions. This was four. 
this is three, and this is a quarter inch. Okay, rebuild. Done. All right, so you cut that time in half. I hope so. Yeah, because, right, I didn't have to do any of that sketch work. That sketch work is already done for me as well. So it's a real quick way to get started, and I'm building this up. And, there's, and certainly we have the ability to do even more. So that was just all that is, is just a little starting out boss. Something maybe a little bit more exciting, a shaft with a key in it. So you see there's actually several features in here. So if you do shafts a lot, start with these start parts, build these guys up, and now we're going. So now that's a regular part, I go save as, save it into the location I'm done, and, and off I go. That's great. So it's like a lot like using Word templates, that you have the formatting the way you want it. And I know most of our customers in our audience are already using templates for drawings, but because everyone has to have the drawing the title blocks. Yeah, yeah. The title blocks gotta have all the certain stuff. But this is really making the standard on the part design. Everybody starts with these primitives. Make a bunch of these primitives, save them into the system, and you're good to go. And actually SolidWorks makes things a little bit easier for that too. So right now this list isn't too bad, but certainly you can imagine there's no reason not to make a bunch of start parts. Have all your primitives in there as, as you're going through. These are simple ones, but you can get very complex and build these all up. So over time, you might get actually too many of them in there to, to list. So SolidWorks does give you the ability to actually organize those. So let's make a subfolder off of, off of this folder. And I'll call it shafts. And I'll take my shaft parts and I'll move them into, the, into that folder. Now as soon as I do that, now I'll watch when I go new. See, I have a, a shafts tab. In my start parts tab. So imagine you can have many different subfolders off of there. Simply SolidWorks recognizes, hey, there's some templates in there, and off I go, we'll be able to build those up. Oh, that makes it very easy to organize all your data. Yeah, I hope so. Are you going to show our audience how to make one? I'm glad you asked that. So let's do one real quick. So let, let's say I want to, uh, I, I have, and I like to do this, right, where I have, I actually tell the people where the origins are. And that helps you, because maybe you might want to make it different ways. So let's say I want that right now I have one where the, uh, the origin is right at the very bottom corner of the particular part. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to change that and say, well, what if we want to make that a mid-plane instead? So I'm going to edit that feature. We'll change it from a line to a mid-plane. Click OK. Now I want to do File, Save As. You see that I have a choice here. And we'll choose to use it as a part template. So all you got to do is save it as a part template and make sure it goes in the right directory. And you're good to go. Build it up as you as you would. As soon I mean, I have to worry about the right directory. As soon as I change the part parts, you recognize it put me in that folder. And so now I can give this a something I might call it a block with centroid at origin. Yes, and I know. And then you can always rename that later, right? Certainly, because all it does is every time I do new, it looks in that particular folder. And now you'll see when I do file new, you'll have a, a block. Centroid origin. Perfect. So you can quickly do this. You can build those up really quickly as, as you need to. Good point. I'm glad you, you shot that. So hopefully you, everybody's going to take advantage of that. Build your start parts up. Start with any part that you want. Do a save as. And now from now on, that's going to be a real quick start part for you. So what, what I'll show you is I saw we're going back to the uh, the automation part. What if I want to be able to be able to automate that particular block? So it's really pretty good. I got to go on what's left. I have to put the dimensions on there. Make a drawing. Add into the system. Yeah, there's still more to do. There, right? there's, there's still more to do. And, and one way that I can do that is actually with DriveWorks Express. Go to on your tools in your SolidWorks, go DriveWorks Express, and the first time you do this, it's actually going to stop you and you're going to need to uh, uh, activate your product. So go to uh, your mysolidworks.com. Which everyone one should be on MySolidWorks if you're not. Make sure you have a mysolidworks.com account. There's lots of free tools in there, lots of free. Uh, training and education also. Top two videos and such right there. And so the first time you go there, I actually have a little hyperlink right there to the hyper, uh, my DriveWorks Express. Or actually, it's my solidworks.com. Um, and then they're going to ask you for, to sign in. And after you sign in, then they're going to give you a little serial number. Take that serial number, put that into your block, and now you're going to be good to go and you'll be able to use the DriveWorks Express. So they just want to make sure that uh, not, not everybody's, uh, they know who's using the system and the product. 
And that should take uh, a couple of minutes. Yeah, at, at that, right? There's no human interaction, so nobody, we don't have to talk to anybody. Then nothing to download. Nothing to download. Right. Okay, great. So after you enter your code. Will a sales rep call us once you activate it? Yeah, not for that. Okay, great. See, the sales guys will call you, but I'm not for that reason. <laughs> so now, like with the tools, Drivers Express, that's going to be available to me here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing we just did before. But instead, I'm going to have Driveworks Express to it instead. So I want to go ahead and choose to change it to a database. Mm -hmm. And I want to go ahead and choose my block at center origin. So it's actually the name of the origin of the, of the product itself. Click open. Now I, I have some nice inputs from the user himself. So I can uh, have it already generate the part number for me. And I remember we said that we wanted to do a, a quarter inch high. The, the width is going to be three, and the length is going to be four. Same part as we just did before. I'm going to hit the create button down here in the bottom right hand side. And I hope the video shows it. You see it's building the part and also the drawings are going to pop up. So now not only is it making the parts, it's also making that drawing too. So this is the exact same part that we just did, did up except for Driverx Express did it for me. Wow. So, I mean, what, 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 what does it take to do all that for you? I mean, it, I mean, it looked like magic, but... <laughs> But was it difficult to program? Is it programming or what is it? Yeah, I thought even that. I'll show you a tutorial here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, there, there's the, it's a step you through the, the process, and it's really building up rules, saying, "Hey, the uh, ask the user the, this information." So I build a dialog box up, take that dialog box information, and then connect that to the, the dimensions that I want to drive or features of intern features on. Got it. So that's what DriveWork Express is doing: is creating that little, allowing you to use a task pane. Build in some of the data that you want and connecting it to the dimensions. Yeah, the dimensions. And then, as you saw, I don't know if it flashed up too fast before, but now you see that it actually did the drawing for me as well. That's a, that's a lot of automation. A lot of automation, and it was really pretty quick. I, I spent not much longer than drawing the actual part that they're actually put, putting it into the system here. I'll show you that we can do even more with it too. So it certainly can do more than blocks, otherwise, we uh, wouldn't have much of a show here. What if you do step shafts a lot? Mm. So again, instead of you certainly do this with the start part, but maybe we want to have some different rules in here that maybe the uh, the radius maybe depends on different sizes of, of the diameters. And so if the diameter is significantly, maybe I can make a bigger radius than, than the other. So I'm actually going to ask the user, hey, what are these three different diameters? What are the length of each one of these? And I want to go ahead and generate the parts for me as well. And the drawing. And the drawing too. Yep. Yep. So same story as before. I'll start from the beginning under Tools, Driverx Express. I'm going to change to use the, the database. Which one do I want to use? In this case, I'm going to use the step shaft. Got it. Click open. Again, this dialog box was built by me. What kind of things are important to me to ask the user these, these questions? So I'm going to have it just generate a part number for me as well. Let's say the shaft length is actually probably 22. In this case, it's a little bit longer than the last one we did. Uh, I want the, the first step to be one inch diameter. The second one, let's just make these easy numbers. We'll make it two. And the, the first one will be back to one again. What's the length going to be? Build this up. Go ahead and create. I'm not even asking the user what the what the fillets are because I can go ahead and calculate that up. So hopefully you see it building up the individual parts from the from the rules that I've done. This is the actual diameters that I've done. So that's my two. This is my one. Each one of those is built up. And then just as before, we also have, if I go to my recent drawings, here's my drawing already built up to the dimensions. Nice. Nice. So again, a lot faster to start from scratch. How long would that take you from scratch? Well, from scratch, I mean, it's probably at least five to ten minutes worth of work, yeah. right? And then you don't know if, uh, you know, I know that if people are in a multi-user environment, sometimes you don't know how they built the part, right? Maybe it was, <laughs> they, did point. they do a cross-section and revolve, or did they take a diameter and extrude? Everyone does it a little differently. So imagine everybody has that little driver's express project. Everybody uses it. Now if you get a particular shaft, you know exactly how it's built. Because it was built the same way as the one you looked at before. I don't have to reverse engineer it. I can actually just start using my, my products over and over again. That's great. That's going to save a lot of time. I hope so. I hope so. Another, so up to this point, I've just been showing you particular parts. Yeah. But I can do even more. I wow. can actually do assemblies. Let's, let's say that I have a, a, just a stand that we use over and over again all over the place. And um, I might have different heights on that particular stand. And uh, let's also imagine that maybe up here at the top, I have some uh, tap holes. Or I take a cylinder and mount to it. And of course, different cylinders are going to have different mounting holes, right? And, and how do you know then what those, the spacing of the holes are? 
you got to get a catalog or, or look up a sheet that you have somewhere taped on your monitor because I've seen you talking oh. about a bunch of stuff taped on your monitor. I have my whole monitor's full of <laughs> sticky notes. <laughs> sticky notes, right. And, and so what are those different types of things? Well, maybe I don't have to have the user do that. I'll just maybe say, hey, what is the cylinder you're going to use and, and size accordingly. So we're going to be able to choose the heights. And then also perhaps I need to have the ability to rotate how that cylinder's mounted because sometimes I go in a, in, a, in an X position, sometimes I go in a Y position. Maybe I want to be able to rotate that. So I made a real quick example doing something same similar way. Same story. Tools, DriveX Express. Let's create, change the database. And we're going to change the database to use our pick and place stand. A lot less questions here because I can make a lot of decisions from the earlier choices. Let's make this a little bit shorter because I know it's going to be 3.0625. Infinite number of sizes I could do. And then maybe have the user pick the actual cylinder type. And then I can rule saying, hey, if he chooses the 201 cylinder, it's going to be a different hole pattern than if he chooses the 201 cylinder. And then maybe I want to rotate, kind of the, is it going to be 90 degrees or not? So this, remember before, just one part, watch what happens this time. So that's going to open up each part one at a time, make an associated drawing for it one at a time. Now it's going to do the base, putting the counter bores in, building those up, changing the size of the particular base, making the drawing of the base. Changing, I don't know if you saw the, this, this whole pattern change. I that did up. see that. Take that yeah. out. Here's my drawing. Now it's actually going to do the assembly itself. So it's building the assembly to the height that I've done. Do the assembly drawing. Check out my dimensions are updating as well. So let's go to my dimensions. Let's go to my, uh, my drawing. Open recent. Here's my pick and place stand. You see that here's the, uh, the actual dimension built right up. And so I don't have that. All those logics and things that you had to do to, to teach to build that up. I can build that right in the driveway. So let me ask you this. If somebody's building this stand, and why don't they just take the old one and do a save as, right? I mean, I bet you a lot of people are doing that. Yeah, that, 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 that certainly, we, definitely people are doing that. And, and why not, right? If you already have something, you can do it over and over again. A couple of risks, risks to that is one is going back to your earlier example, is that you know, do I know the one that I'm copying? Is, how did he build it up? In this case, they're all built the same way. Yeah. Uh, plus, you have to look for it. Right? Oh my God! Which project was it on, and which cell was it in, and where, where was that? You had to go through there and find it. Here, it's basically treated just like a start part. God, I can quickly go through there, find that particular part, and go through there. So let's think about this. Was there, there was uh, three parts, three drawings, uh, six mates, and I, I didn't count somewhere between twelve and, and twenty dimensions. There was, there was a lot of stuff there. Um, it took about forty seconds, thirty seconds to make that, and I'm sure if anyone had to start from scratch, that's going to be good 20, 15, 20 minutes. It, it took me over 20 minutes to build it in the first time, right? And then putting the rules on there. So I, I probably had a half hour in there. So certainly, you're not going to do this for onesies, right? If you never do the stand again. But you're going to get payback pretty quickly. If you, mm -hmm. hey, if you do, I'll let it for you make this three times, it's going to be a pretty quick thing. And then, of course, the best part is free. It's included. Yeah. There's nothing on there. It started. Yeah, and, and it, certainly there's a learning curve. I'm not, not going to say that you don't have to do it as well. But the nice thing is, is that because DriveWorks Express has been around for quite a while, it's been inside of SolidWorks for several years, the, uh, there's a lots of YouTube help and, and things to be able to help you up to go as well. Plus, there's tutorials. So in, inside of regular SolidWorks, if I go to help, the, uh, the tutorials, and under productivity tools, you see down here at the bottom, there is a DriveWorks Express tutorial. 30 minutes is what they say that you can go through this particular tutorial. And in this tutorial, you're actually going to go through and do an entire assembly. And so you, you see here, imagine that you're making the entries. And you have the ability to make different size the entries, different, uh, different uh, configurations to build those up. Because I'm not only can I drive uh, dimensions, I can drive configurations, I can turn on and off features. So you can really do quite a bit of stuff with it. So would you recommend people at least start using start parts or template files on their parts and assemblies? Or they could jump right into DriveWorks Express? I think people should do both. You know, certainly for the simple for a block, there's probably not a big payback to use putting that in the DriveWorks Express. Now certainly the drawing was kind of cool, and, and certainly I could argue that uh, it would be a little bit faster, but you can't be just simply going to a part, save as a, a part, and use it over and over again. Yeah. It's fast. If you want to start putting more into it, the more complex your start parts get, then I think you probably ought to be looking at using Drivers Express as your start part tool. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The, um, the, I also want to show you uh, there is a Drivers Express website. And so the, uh, 
there are right here halfway down the Drivers Express what driversexpress.com you see that there are more tutorials. So we definitely recommend first do the one built in SolidWorks. Yeah. Then use this one. There's five nice tutorials built in, inside of this that you can go through and, and start using this to learn more about each one of these. So I showed you how to do uh, start parts for parts and assemblies. Mm -hmm. um, lots of times people are a little bit afraid to, to get into the system because, wow, I, I see Driver Express has been doing you know, hundreds of parts and building all that up. And you're, you're certainly welcome to do that, but you know, start small. But if you stand back and think, well, you know, if I can save 50% on just those little parts, imagine say 50% on your bigger parts. Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. Um, I think if somebody said, you know what, I've been using DriveWorks Express, I want to take it to the next level. Like you talked about, some things more complex. Maybe I have a large assembly. Like, what's a large assembly to you with DriveWorks Express? Yeah, yeah. Dri DriveWorks Express, you know, there, there's no limit, no practical limit to it. But certainly as you get bigger and bigger, you get into the 20 to 30 parts, DriveWorks Express does start to get a little more difficult because it gets difficult to, to filter your parts and go through each one of those. Um, so there are tools to get to, to, to do even bigger. You see I have on, on the screen here the matrix. There is a DriveWorks Solo product available to the users, uh, which gives you the ability to not only uh, work with bigger assemblies, but give more intelligence to the drawings. Maybe the drawings need to scale and change as we need to go through each one of those. Yeah, scale and change is important. So if you make long parts, right, you don't want to have a long part that won't fit on your C-size sheet. Yeah, right? yeah. Now, with Express, would do it, but now I have to go to that drawing and manually do all the scaling. Versus Solo can make some logic, hey, because it's this long, now I need to be able to scale that particular view or the drawing to build each one of those up. Well, I also see a DriveWorks Pro. Can you just briefly tell the audience what's the difference yeah. between them? So that takes you to the next level, even past that. So the Solo is one guy sitting at his computer doing, with it, working with the SolidWorks. The Pro gives the ability to imagine taking that to the web. And so now I, I, my sales reps can be doing, doing this stuff. So imagine a sales rep sitting right next to his customer with his iPad typing in the different sizes and they're getting feedback right away. Here's exactly what your part's going to look like. And the 3D model will be there too. Spin around, look like what it looks like, and then also generate the quotes. It has the ability to even generate other kinds of files, not only the cell response. So we can generate office documents, Excel documents, uh, talk to databases, read the data information, push it back and forth. So you can go even more. Okay, even past that. All right. I think that's the last question. So we are wrapping things up. I want to thank everybody for attending, and uh, I think it was a, a good session. So, Jeff, thanks for showing us how people can be better, faster, smarter. 